Hello. Um, here is a quick video on just going through many tabs and just kind of play and just to understand the software. Um, here we have some data. We have, let's see, we have hospital stay, hospital satisfaction, um, diabetes pretest, diabetes post test, post test, glucose. Um, without even looking at the data, um, you can kind of probably just get a feel of what's going on. Um, hospital stay, I bet that's some type of survey. Um, this is another type of survey. And there was a diabetes pretest um, before they went in the hospital, most likely. Diabetes post test after, and also a glucose level. Um, here we can we can look at individual graphs. Um, we can look at combined graphs. Let's do some individual graphs. Let's start. This is a perfect graph for a pie chart. This one. Let's find a pie chart. I'm going to go graph. We could do a pie chart or bar chart. Um, I'm going to click here. It says chart counts of unique values. So I'm going to click here. And this one is the second one. And pie chart options. I don't have to here. Um, no, not that one. I think labels would be better. Let's call it um, hospital satisfaction. Go back to that right. Satisfaction, okay. Um, we do subtitles, not necessary. Um, sliced labels. Um, you can put the category name, frequency, percent, all of them. You can draw a line. Either one. We'll just do that to see what it looks like. Click OK. Um, you could do multiple graphs here, but it wouldn't make sense for this type of graph. Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about in another type. Um, let's click OK. And there is our graph pie, our, um, pie chart. And we'll just talk about it. Just explain. 32.5% were somewhat dissatisfied, so forth and so on. Um, that's really it. Not much more to it um, in that you may even talk about something in context of the original problem. Um, just an example. Let's do another graph. Let's do a bar chart. Because um, the bar chart and the pie chart are almost the same. But we want counts of unique values here. Um, we'll do a simple, same idea, same principle. Do I need some labels? One, label again. Hospital satisfaction. Um, data labels. Uh, nothing new. Um, click OK. OK. So your chart. Um, it would be nice if we had a little color here. Um, but here, same principle. Um, we have actual counts here. When I say actual counts, you see we have 13 somewhat dissatisfied. Notice these graphs are really the same. It's just a pie chart and a bar chart of the same information. Um, let's see. Let's do a stem and leaf. Which one would I use for stem and leaf? Maybe these that have smaller values. Um, but either one's OK. Any one of these that has numerical values. Um, notice it didn't even give me the option to use the one that was C2 because those are text values. So it won't even make sense or work for this one. Um, let's use hospital stay. Actually, I think the other one would be more interesting because they're going to have a stem and a leaf. This one's not going to be very interesting because those are just single digits. Let's do pretest. Um, now this one, if I say by variable, it'll section it off. Um, and let's show you the difference. Let's just do, and again, I'm just exploring. And exploring is good just to help you to understand. We're just going to do it without doing any by variables. So we're going to click OK. There's our stem and leaf chart here. And remember, this means 
says looks like a number. My leaf is the whole number. One digit sets a nine. That's zero nine. That's seventeen. 24, 25, 27, 29, y'all get the point. Um, remember how you read these from Winnie tab. These numbers over here, the one, the two, the seven, it's cumulative going down this way, cumulative going up this way. That's the middle group, okay? Let's try that again. We're just exploring. Um, stem and leaf, this time, let's do by variable. I'm gonna use, um, by hospital stay. No, I don't think this is going to work very well. Let's see what happens. Yeah, they it didn't work very well because basically they're looking at a stem and leaf for hospital stay of two. There was only three they had hospital stay of two, and they looked at those. This one they had, for those who had hospital stay of one, they were n equals seven. So I guess it's okay, this is somewhat useful. You could use this. And honestly, any one of these individual graphs are okay. Again, we're just exploring, because um, I'm not very specific to tell you which one you need to use. Let's look at a box plot. That would be interesting. Let's go simple, okay. Um, let's choose um, diabetes post-it with a box plot. Label, you could give it another name. Um, I'm just going to say hospital. Because I just feel like typing. Um, label, um, you could label the outliers. Okay. If you wanted to label individual data just to see what happens, just to explore. Let's do individual data, see what happens here. Here, click OK. Um, do multiple graphs by variable here. And this time we're going to use hospital satisfaction. So this one will work out nice because it'll look at only those that were very satisfied. It'll group those. Those that are somewhat dissatisfied, so forth and so on. So we're going to use it with variables and separate panels. Okay. Um, so notice it put the individual numbers on there and that looks kind of messy. So I wouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. So let's do that again. So graph, um, box plot, simple again. And didn't like the individual data. Let's get rid of that. I'm going to say none. Click OK. OK. There's the first one I did. There's the second one. Much better. I like the way it looks. Um, and this just shows you're comparing um, those different areas. And this is referring to the mean and I forgot what this was see that's why I should have labeled it better but it was one of these variables here but again you could that's going to be over here um, your median is in the middle here the Q1 is here in this case that's about so it's about 25 to get the point all right now let's put all this together um, oh let's do let's compare oh again this right here could be a pairing because you're looking at hospital and also the dissatisfied. Um, there's several different pairings you could do when you do the multiple graphs. Um, you could do a, do something that we haven't done. Let's do a histogram. Histogram, simple histogram. Um, I, I like the curve, so I'm going to do one with the bell curve. Let's stick. Okay. Let's look at glucose level. And this time we're going to go multiple graphs, which is nice, by variable. And we'll do hospital satisfaction. So this time we're doing, I forgot already which one it was. 
um, glucose level and also we're looking at satisfaction. So it, how would I label this? Glucose and versus hospital satisfaction. So let's go and label that. Glucose versus hospital satisfaction. And then, do I do any labels here? Nope, that's fine. You can explore that if you like. Um, go here, click OK. All right. Now we have normal data. We have, this is comparing glucose level and hospital satisfaction. Um, we're looking at uh, with somewhat dissatisfied, we have a, looks like a mean of 101.6. Um, which one has the greatest mean? Very dissatisfied has the greatest mean. So when I explain it, I would say that, again, very dissatisfied has the largest um, sense of measure of sense of tendency. Um, somewhat dissatisfied has the smallest measure of sense of tendency. Um, if I'm looking at standard deviation, maybe that tells me the spread of the data. Um, in this case, which one, which data set is more spread out? Um, somewhat satisfied is more spread out than the rest of them. Um, so, and that's how you would explain um, all the data sets. Um, very satisfied, looks somewhat skewed with a tail to the right, but not really. Um, I'm only ready to really determine that. Remember, you could go and find the median. Maybe you could do a box plot for each one and compare your median with the mean. If the mean is a larger value, then it's somewhat skewed to the right. So you could do that as well. Um, and then you could just copy these graphs, put them in, in, in Word, and you're done. You could go to editor, um, go to panel. These are neat. Oh, we gotta add a panel first. So we gotta add. So I remember how to do this. I think I gotta go layout tool. Yeah, I like this one. And you can put all your graphs on one neat little tool deal. You don't have to do this. Um, let's say we need three rows, three columns. Honestly, I don't know. I'm just gonna put all my cool graphs I just made in my layout tool. So I really have too many columns and rows. And then I could, and this one I don't really like, so I probably could take that one and get rid of it. Maybe not put it in there. But again, this is just a quick outline of what we're looking for with the project. And basically, again, just go through, click, try to figure things out. Um, create some graphs that I've never seen before in my life and just try to explain them. Explain what you see. Um, try to explain it in reference to measure the central tendency. This is a typical value. Um, the spread of the data and also um, whether it's normal or not. Skewed left, skewed right. And that's really it. Hopefully this helps. If not, we'll talk about it tomorrow.